Ah, isn't this the dream of every man? And the bane of every woman out there. Can't help it though, I just love the heroes of my The Magic franchise. The games are just timeless, timeless in the sense that they will never get out of fashion. Also, you will never find time to change your underwear while playing them. Heroes of Might and Magic 3. In my opinion, the best turn-based strategy game ever made. A game that has a distinct look and sound that simply never ages. I would even argue that all installments that came after look worse because they feel less like a board game, they feel cramped and overwhelming. Heroes 2 was also a great game in its own right. As a matter of fact, I have had some of my greatest childhood memories playing Heroes 2 at my cousins. Back in the late 90s we were all children who barely understood how the game works and despite never completing even one single multiplayer session, we were mesmerized by the beautiful colors, the addictive gameplay and the mysterious maps that we could explore at will. We played the game for years. The sessions usually ended when their mom threw us out on the streets. Well, now that I'm almost the same age as my uncle's wife was back in the day, I think she was just a little bit pissed that we were occupying her living room and eating all of her snacks. Yeah, well, anyway, for me the holy trinity of Heroes games has always been Heroes 2, 3 and 4. Each of these games just looked and felt so different from the others, with Heroes 3 being the best among them. Now I've played Heroes 5 and 6 before, and let me tell you, they pale in comparison to Heroes of Might and Magic 3. I know exactly what the developers keep getting wrong, but I think that's something for another video. What I never touched before, however, is Heroes of Might and Magic 1, because I always considered Heroes 2 to be superior in every fashion. That is what I thought at least. However, I do not know for sure because I base my assumptions solely on the way the game looks and the number of creatures the game has. I mean, this screen right here shows you basically every creature and hero you have in the entire game and that is pretty minuscule. You have 4 races, 24 homebrew creatures and 4 neutral creatures in total. That's it. You might have also noticed that the creatures in the game look extremely cartoony, especially when you compare them to how they look in the sequels. That is because the game is trying to establish a strong connection to the Might and Magic franchise, a dungeon crawler series that concluded with the fifth installment a couple of years before Heroes was released. You can actually see the resemblance when you compare the creatures from both franchises. And would you look at that? Upon starting the game, you're actually led into a DOS menu, which makes the game look much more dated than it actually is. But as soon as you enter, you're greeted by majestic music as you select your game's settings. Well, the three modi that you can select from anyway. We're gonna have a look at all of them, but let me demonstrate some of the basics in the standard game, which is what I would usually play in the sequels. And since I'm an absolute pro, I'm going for the big boy difficulty. After all, why play like a bitch? You have a large selection of maps that you can choose from and you have 4 races. What sucks though is that you do not know what color represents each race. They did that much better in the sequels. I'm going with blue for now. And here we go. Heroes of Might and Magic might seem rather complex at first, but let me break it down for you. You have three kinds of screens. You have your castle screen in which your hero enslaves innocent creatures to commit mass genocide across the world. You have your world map view in which your hero moves around to gather resources, conquer mines to provide you with daily income, gather artifacts that increase your hero's stats, and you attack sacrilegious motherfuckers with magical spells and slave labor. By the way, the creatures you see in front of you are just an avatar for an entire army. The number you see below the creature is the size of that army. Each creature has its own stats that you can look at so you can calculate in your head if you're tough enough to give or take a hit. And that is basically the entire game concept for you. Congratulations, you have now graduated as a beginner in Heroes of Might and Magic. And you've earned yourself a cookie. Go on then. Come on. Have it. Yeah. That's nice. <laughs> there you go. Of course, not all creatures are equal. In Heroes, we have something we call the tier system. You have your tier 1 creatures and you have your tier 6 creatures. While you can overcome tier 6 creatures with sheer numbers, it is generally a bad idea to attack it with tier 1 creatures unless you're 100% sure you can one-shot it. Did that just happen? Well, fuck. So much for the standard game. Ah, right on cue. Now we do multiplayer. Ah, great timing, Thomas. I had an incredible accident out there with my standard game and I needed to... Thomas? What the hell is this? 
Ah, yes, I, I totally forgot to buy groceries. I've been really, really busy lately. Lots and lots of work to do. Yes, uh, okay, I, I've, been, I've been playing Heroes of Might and Magic for the last six days. Sue me, man. What am I supposed to eat? <clears throat> what do you mean? You're here to play Heroes of Might and Magic with me, remember? I'm hungry. Oh, fuck, go eat carpet for all I care. What am I supposed to do? <sighs> so much for that. The system is simple, each player gets to play his turn while the others wait for him to complete it. It is a system that aged badly in my opinion, a problem that was solved in games like Civilization 4, a game I also rather enjoy playing. Her players play simultaneously and you lose far less time than in Heroes 3. I used to play Heroes 3 online with 3 other guys and I was the fastest to complete my turn because I'm a pro and I played this for decades. I spent most of my time doing house chores or taking a shit while waiting for the others to complete their turn. Oh, I I swear, my apartment never looked as clean as it did back in that day. Chicks actually started loving coming over, they stopped complaining about my dirty dishes and my filthy bathroom for once. The campaign is what I would advise each of you to play if you wanna play this game. It is different than what I remember in the game's sequels, because each map feels like an unrestricted all-out war on the CPU. The first map is easy and you will quickly dispose of the computer, think of it as a tutorial level. In maps 2, 3 and 4 you will start to see that the CPU is increasingly swarming you with a large number of heroes to try and overwhelm you. Other than that, you're still playing on equal footing. The four following maps is where things become tough. You're usually separated from the enemy player by river, sea or desert. Your resources are scattered halfway across the map, giving you an insane disadvantage when it comes to gathering tier 6 creatures while the CPU has an abundance of mines and castles, meaning he has much more incomes and a much larger number of creatures. Once you dare set foot on their land, they will swarm you with everything they gathered since the day you came out of your mama's pussy, and they will destroy you with impunity. And that gets much worse when you fight Lord Slayer the Barbarian. You cannot cross the desert because you are slow as fuck, but the Barbarian race thrives on this terrain. Within a couple of days they will fly across the desert at warp speed to have their tier 5 trolls expand your anal cavities with a rock, while their tier 6 cyclops gives you an anal infusion. You're fucked beyond belief, and do not get me started on the final level. Oh boy, your butthole is gonna love it when they come at you from all sides in insane numbers, and worst of all, they seem to ignore each other and they're coming directly after you! Now the AI in the game is pretty one dimensional. You can pretty much predict what the CPU is gonna do, but that does not matter because the odds are so overwhelmingly stacked against you that you're still gonna get your teeth kicked down your throat. One final thing I'd like to mention is that the spell system is different from all the other games. In the other heroes games you have the knowledge skill which determines how much mana you have. You learn spells and you use the mana pool to fight with magic. Here it is a little bit different. You have no mana pool and instead knowledge decides how often you get to use a spell. After you deplete a spell, you kinda forget it and have to relearn it all over again. This is an interesting concept, makes you think twice before you use the last charge of a spell halfway across the map. My experience with the game is actually shockingly good. The game actually has things that are different from all the other games. It might be smaller, has fewer creatures, it's much less mysterious, your hero doesn't have skills that he learns when he levels up, and when you go into the castle screen you barely have anything to build, with the only upgradable building being the mage guild. The game is, however, very cohesive and focused. The AI might not be very smart, but it's still challenging due to sheer aggression. It really wants that butthole of yours. Badly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that guys, I really didn't want to- <laughs> Okay, 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 I'm done, I'm done. The game gets an 8 out of 10 from me, which should tell you what I think of the sequels. And the game spawned numerous sequels, expansions for these sequels, fan games made from these sequels, it revived the entire Might and Magic franchise, and it spawned other games in the same universe. But what I found most interesting about the whole situation is, the game is basically a ripoff of an earlier game by the same developer. I'm amazed by how similar both games are to each other. It has the same screens, mechanics, battle system and everything. And here I always thought that Heroes was an original idea. Well, the more you know.
been really fun playing this one. Hey, listen, if you never tried Heroes before, give these titles a shot, damn it. It doesn't have to be the first one. I would suggest you try out Heroes 2 or 3 first, depending on what appeals to you the most. Heroes 3 is the most complete game out there. And if you're an avid Heroes fan like me but never tried out the first one, give the game a shot. You're really gonna like it, trust me. Anyway, I was Dr. Sledgehammer, and I will see you guys on the next Sledgehammer Review. Bye. I will eat your ass!